Hello everyone, my name is Hadi Zafar and welcome to First Aid Explained, where I, as a medical student, try my best to explain in depth every page of the First Aid USMLE Step 1 2021 textbook. In this video, I'll be covering the biochemistry portion, pages 86 to 88. So let's begin. So here on the first page, we have a diagram depicting glycogen regulation by insulin and glucagon, as well as epinephrine. And the main factors are glycogen being converted to glucose, which is through the enzyme of glycogen phosphorylase, and glucose converting back to glycogen with the help of glycogen synthase. And this is, and this is where it's stimulated through the tyrosine kinase dimer receptor, which recepts insulin from the liver and muscle. Next, we have the alpha receptor, which is epinephrine from the liver and beta receptor, which is epinephrine in the liver and muscle, and glucagon, which is found in the liver, to the glucagon receptor. Now both glucagon receptor and beta receptor are attached with the adenylate cyclase, converting ATP to CAMP, which helps in the protein kinase A to stimulate glycogen phosphorylase kinase, leading to stimulation of glycogen phosphorylase converting glycogon back to glucose. And protein phosphatase inhibits this, whereas protein kinase A inhibits glycogen synthase. Now glycogen itself has branches of alpha-1,6 bonds and linkages of alpha-1,4 bonds. Now the skeletal muscle of glycogen undergoes glyconolysis, where glucose 1,1-phosphate it's converted to glucose 6 phosphate, which is rapidly metabolized during exercise. Now, hepatocytes are the center where glycogen is stored and undergoes glyconeolysis to maintain blood sugar at appropriate levels. Glycogen phosphorylase liberates glucose 1 phosphate and residues off branch glycogen until four glucose units remain on a branch. Then, four alpha D gluconotransferase, a debranching enzyme, moves three of the four glucose units from the branch to the linkage. Then alpha-1,6 glucosidase, debranching enzyme, cleaves off the re last residue, liberating glucose. Now limit dextrin refers to the two to four residues remaining on a branch after glycogen phosphorylase has already shortened it. Now we have four different types of glycogen storage disease. 1. Von Gerke disease, 2. Pompe disease, 3. Cori disease, and 4. McArdle disease. And here are the list of glycogen enzymes. Alright, moving on. Let's dive deeper into the glycogen storage diseases. Now, at least 15 types have been identified, all resulting in abnormal glycogen metabolism and accumulation of glycogen within cells. Now, periodic acid shift stain identifies glycogen and is useful in identifying these diseases. Now, the five main types for glycogen storage diseases is von Gerken disease, type 1, Pompe disease, type 2, Cori disease, type 3, Anderson disease, type 4, and McArdle disease, type 5. Now the findings for von Gerke disease or type 1 glycogen storage disease is severe fasting hypoglycemia where large levels of glycogen in the liver and kidneys lead to high blood lactate, high triglycerides and high levels of uric acid or gout and hepatomegaly and renomegaly. The liver does not regulate blood glucose and the enzyme that's deficient is glucose 6-phosphate and the treatment is frequent oral glucose or cornstarch avoidance of fructose and galactose and impair gluconeogenesis and glycomylysis. Next is Pompe disease or type 2 glycogen storage disease. And the findings are cardiomyopathy, hypotonia, exercise intolerance, and systemic findings lead to early death. Now the enzyme deficiency is lysosomal acid alpha 1 4 glucosidase or acid maltase with alpha 1 6 glucosidase activity. Now, keep in mind that Pompe trashes the pump, so PP for P-U-M-P, pump, and the first and fourth letter, 
so P and P to pump as well, which means heart, liver, and muscle. Now the third type of glycogen storage disease is Cori disease, and this is similar to von Gerke disease, but milder symptoms and normal blood lactate levels and can lead to cardiomyopathy, limit dextrin, like structures accumulate in cytosol. And that debranching enzymes are deficient here, or defective. Alpha 1 6 glucosidase and 4 alpha D glucotransferase. Now, however, gluconeogenesis is intact. Now, the fourth type of glycogen storage disease is Anderson disease, and this mostly commonly presents with hepatosplenomegaly and failure to thrive in early infancy. Other findings include infantile cirrhosis muscular weakness, hypotonia, cardiomyopathy, and early childhood death, and that deficient enzymes are branching enzyme. And neuromuscular form can present at any age. Now, hypoglycemia occurs late in the disease, however. Lastly, in type 5 glycogen storage disease, we have something called this McArdle disease, which is increased glycogen in the muscle, but muscle cannot break it down. So we have painful muscle cramps, myoglobinuria, or red urine, with strenuous exercise, and arrhythmia from electrolyte abnormalities. Second wind phenomena noted during exercise due to increased muscular blood flow. Now skeletal muscle glycogen phosphorylase is the defective enzyme, myophosphophorylase, and char characterized by a flat venous lactate curve with a normal rise in ammonia levels during exercise. Now blood glucose levels typically are ineffective. So McArdle, M for muscle. Now, keep in mind that types 1 to 5 are all autosomal recessive. And to remember all these, remember vice president can't accept money. So V for von Gertel's disease, P for president for Pompe disease, can't C for Corey, A for Anderson disease, and M money for McArdle disease. And Anderson is branching and is Corey is debranching. So A, B, C, D is the mnemonic. All right, next we have lysosomal storage diseases. And these are lysosomal enzyme deficiencies leading to accumulation of abnormal metabolic products, increasing incidence of Tay Sachs, NAM and PIC, and other forms of Gosha disease in Askeny Jews. Okay, so the first disease is Tay Sachs disease. And the findings are progressive neurodegeneration, developmental delay, hyperreflexia, and hyperacusis, or cherry red spot in the macula, I can see here, lipid accumulation in ganglion cell layer, lysosomes with onion skin, no hepatosplenomegaly. No now, the defective enzyme, or deficient enzyme, is hexosaminidase A, and the accumulated substrate is GM2 ganglioside. And this is autosomal recessive. Now, in February disease, there is the late and early findings. The early findings are a triad of episodic peripheral neuropathy, or angiokeratomas, you can see here in B, and hypohydrosis. The late symptoms show progressive renal failure and cardiovascular disease. And the deficient enzyme is alpha galactosidase A. Then the accumulated substrate is ceramide trihexoside. And this is this is this disease is X-linked recessive. Next we have metachromatic leukodystrophy. And the findings are central and peripheral demyelination with ataxia and dementia. And the deficient enzyme is RL sulfatase A. And the accumulated substrate is cyberside sulfate. And this is autosomal recessive. Now, crab disease is also autosomal recessive, and the findings are peripheral neuropathy, destruction of oligodendrocytes, developmental delay, optic atrophy, and globoid cells. And the deficient enzyme is galactosibrosidase, or galactosilylamidase. And the accumulated substrate is galactosibroside cyclosine. Next is Gaucher disease which is also autosomal recessive. This is the most common lysosomal storage disease. The findings are hepatosplenomegaly, pancytopenia, 
osteoporosis, avascular necrosis of the femur, bone crisis, Gaucher cells, you can see here on C, and lip, which are lipid-laden macrophages resembling crumpled tissue paper. Now, glucosibrobrosidase, or B-glucosidase, is the deficient enzyme. And the treatment is with recombinant glucosidrobrosidase. Next, we have Neon Pick disease, which is which are the findings of progressive neurodegeneration, hepatosplenic splenomegaly, foam cells, which are lipid-laden macrophages, you can see in picture D, and cherry red spots on macula, seen in Tay Sachs disease as well. And the enzyme deficient is sphenogomyelinase, and the accumulated substrate is sphenomegaly. And this is also autosomal recessive. Next, we have mucopolysaccharidosis, and this is Hurler syndrome and Hunter syndrome. Now, at Hurler syndrome, there, are de there is developmental delay, skeletal abnormalities, airway obstruction, and corneal clouding, as well as hepatosplenomegaly. And the enzyme in deficient is alpha L hydrogenase, and hep heparin sulfate and dermatin sulfate are accumulated. And this is also autosomal recessive. Next, we have Hunter syndrome. Now, this is a milder version of Hurler syndrome, plus aggressive behavior, and no corneal clouding. And the enzyme in deficient is, the defective enzyme is adronate 2 sulfatase. And the accumulation is the same of heparin sulf sulfate and dermatin sulfate. However, this Hunter syndrome is X-linked recessive. So a nice mnemonic to remember this is hunters can see clearly as they have no corneal clouding and aggressively aim for the X-linked recessive. All right, that's it for today. Thank you for all for listening and have a good one. Bye-bye.